We want to try to fix our ergonomics, i.e. our workplace environment to get a better, straighter, more neutral spine and a more neutral neck when looking at our monitors, when looking at our cell phones, to try to reduce some of that pressure that's on our spine, take it off and have a better, more comfortable working environment. What's going on everybody is Dr. Perlman from Paramount Chiropractic and Wellness in Richardson, Texas. And today I want to make a quick video to kind of shed a little bit of light on um, this forward head posture or this text neck or, you know, my posture is bad at my desk, this thing we hear a lot about. Now, what I'd like to do is point out a few things that you can just do for yourself at home. And obviously this is not going to replace a chiropractic adjustment by any means because when it comes to taking the pressure off the nerve, reducing the pressure in the joint that is actually causing the discomfort at the level of a disc usually. And it's those stretched fibers that are causing a lot of the aggravation within that joint. And that is why you should get checked by your chiropractor. All that being said, this video is again going to address what you can do at the house to help yourself in an acute flare up. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that it's not always neck pain that's associated with forward head posture. And it's not just the upper back either to assess tension on the spinal cord, or even something as simple as a very traditional, what we would call a slumps test with a, with a leg that actually gets raised. Hopefully I'll have an illustration here in the video. We're able to utilize this test to find out if it's a positive test for tension on the actual spinal cord itself. Now remember the spinal cord runs from the base of the skull where the brain attaches to the spinal cord and goes all the way down to the actual upper lumbar area. And that's where the spinal cord ends and then it branches out into various nerves. The one we're more familiar with is the sciatic nerve. But what happens if we're actually having lower back pain when we're sitting at our desk? Well, the first thing I want to do is challenge you to see if after getting around and moving for about two to three minutes to see if a, a small stretch or a mild stretch can reduce some of that tension, actually go back to sitting down without your head down in this forward net in this without your head down in this forward head posture. As you can see, my neck is really far forward now. My pecs are short and tight and my upper back is rounded. Well, can I reduce that pressure by simply bringing my head level up and getting my shoulder blades back? Oftentimes what that can do is actually get you in a better posture in your back and take the pressure off the cord coming forward, thus pulling the cord up and making things tight and rounded in the lower back. Oftentimes the people with the worst posture are the people that work the most amount of hours at a desk. And even if those are great financial gains in the long run, they can be just detrimental to your back, developing something called flat back syndrome. What happens is when you lose the lordosis or the proper C-shaped curve or that sway back, which isn't ideal when it's too much, but it's most definitely not ideal when it's a straight down kind of posture creating a ton of pressure on all the discs. And that can be detrimental and ruin your lower back for the future. And you don't want to take care of this when it's too late. You want to start taking care of it now. And that first tip is just to have the head up when you're at your desk after stretching out a little bit so you can work more in this posture. If you can't get a standing desk or something to elevate your screen, try just putting your monitor on some textbooks so you can have your head up. The second cue I would advise and when I say your monitor, I also mean your laptop as well. The second tip I would advise is to go ahead and get something like this. You can purchase this pool noodle at your local grocery store, your Walmart, job lot, whatever, right? You can get this in various sizes of thickness and even add a towel around so you can lay on this for five to six minutes at night, building up to about 10 to 15 minutes at night to do some home self-care or you can go with a more radical type of, uh, a more radical kind of forced extension into your neck. Once you've built tolerance to, again, with something like this, 
where you lay down five, six, ten minutes a night. You don't want to fall asleep on this. That'll create a whole different kind of pain. This is for just about anyone that's having a lot of tension in their neck or throughout their spine as their neck is always forward while they're sitting. Now, there is a art to just utilizing this block in general, and you don't want to have to go ahead and just lay your neck right on it, plop, is it in the right place? Within the description, you'll find the link that actually shows just how specific this needs to be when it comes to laying on this at, at home. And again, I am actually encouraging all of you to see a chiropractor, to get fitted, if you will, for something like this, or maybe even your neck is so far degenerated or so stuck forward where you lost the ability to come back into extension. And then yes, you will need to have an extensive rehabilitative program in the appropriate office. But guys, these are just a few ways that I'm trying to show you that I hope will help you not get to that point where you're needing that aggressive rehab all the time for your neck being so forward and there being so much pain. So remember, it doesn't matter where the pain is. We want to try to fix our ergonomics, i.e. our workplace environment to get a better, straighter, more neutral spine and a more neutral neck when looking at our monitors, when looking at our cell phones, to try to reduce some of that pressure that's on our spine, take it off, and have a better, more comfortable working environment. Guys, if you need anything, feel free to comment. And a shout out to the DFW and beyond to all the people that made it into our office. Until next time, everybody, it's Dr. Perlman.